hello guys uh, today in this video we'll be discussing in furtherance of all the information that i provided you in the previous video uh, so we'll i'll basically walk you through the entire process when you receive the mood code problem and how should you wrap your heads around it and how should you proceed with understanding the concept the issues to be dealt with so i'll we'll uh, just go step by step uh, for this, I will be referring to the specific mood code problem that I was assigned with uh, with the referred document. So this particular mood code uh, problem was to be filed in the International Court of Justice. Uh, it's it's basically a dispute between the United Province, that is the applicant, and the state of Kima, that is the respondent. Uh, and it is to be submitted in the International Court of Justice to resolve the dispute which was regarding the arrest of some United Province sailors by the Kima Navy. So, uh, to give you an overall idea, uh, aapko samaj mein aa jayega, what I am trying to say, but uh, to tell you uh, thoda sa in advance, it's basically territorial waters mein of the uh, ki, uh, territorial waters of Kima Navy. Uh, unke mein United Province ke sailors are found and uh, Kima Navy uh, arrested them. So that is what the dispute is about and it is filed in the International Court of Justice. So ye kuch background information hai. This background information is actually relevant in a way. It helps you understand the background of the case. Uh, so it is very important because when you attack foundations ko attack kara jata hai while you are uh, competing in a mood code competition, these are the things that you can always refer to other than the core dispute which we will be discussing and in the latter part of this video. So just a quick over overview, it's basically a joint notification addressed to the registrar of the court, uh, Hague, uh, where the International Court of Justice uh, sits uh, on the 21st of January 2021. Uh, so we'll just go through it quickly on behalf of the state of united province and the state of kima in accordance with article 40 clause 1 of the statute of international court of justice we have the honor of transmit uh, honor to transmit to you an original of a special agreement for submissions to the national court of justice of the differences between applicant and the respondent concerning the arrest of the united province sailors by the kima navy signed in the hague the netherlands on the 21st day of january uh, <clears throat> year 2021 so guys this can always be used in your while you're drafting your statement of jurisdiction in the moot court uh, memorial uh, so if i have to give you a quick overview we can have a so this is from the side of the applicant we have to make sure that the first page of the side of the applicant is always blue in color uh, coming down quickly i'll just take you to the statement of jurisdiction yeah see the statement of jurisdiction wahi hai article 40 clause 1 of the statute of the international court of justice this you can always refer to while you're referring to the statement of jurisdiction so it's made the magni lananatha usually uh statement of jurisdiction nahi diya hota hai, so you yourself have to figure out which clause ke under you have the authority to approach the international court of justice and how uh the court has the authority to deal the case kyunki kai bar this also comes into the picture that this court has no particular case to deal with this authority. Hi hai. Same uh, will be from the side of the defendant. Uh, this is uh, from the side, uh, side of the respondent, the defendant. It has to be red in color. That is like symbolic, like it's uh, uniform everywhere. Uh, I'll just take, quickly take you this to the statement of jurisdiction. You see article, wahi wala article 40 clause 1. It's being referred to. This is your statement of jurisdiction. So you can basically just copy paste, not really copy paste, copy paste, but just understanding ke liye, uh, reframe it in a way why whichever side you're representing in front of the court. This is just hypothetical in nature, so not to be dealt with. So this is the special agreement they were referring to in the previous uh, 
slide uh, so i'll just quickly th take you through it the special agreement which is to be submitted to the international court of justice by the state of philistine don't get confused guys state of philistine is state of kima only uh, i'll tell you a very interesting fact about this entire problem let's move on and the state of israelia which is uh sorry state of united province is philistine uh state of kima is israelia uh so we'll just quickly go through considering that the dispute regarding arrest of the united province sailor by the kima navy which this is the uh, this is what the agreement is about is yehi hoga pure dispute ka concept recognizing that the parties uh have not been un uh, have been unable to settle these differences by means of negotiation so ideally kya hota hai ki sare negotiations cha international ho cha internal ho they try to settle it internally through a me through the means of negotiation jo nahi ho paya hai that is why they are approaching the international court of justice desiring uh, further to define the issue to be submitted to the icj here in refer to the court uh, to be resolved वही पुरानी बात जो मैंने आपको बताई इन फर्दर इंस देयर ऑफ द पार्टीज हैव कंक्लूडेड द स्पेशल अग्रीमेंट सो दीज आर द क्लॉसेस ऑफ द अग्रीमेंट किस आर्टिकल के अंडर आएगा फोर्टी क्लॉज वन ऑफ द स्टैच्यूट ऑफ कोर्ट वही स्टेटमेंट ऑफ जूरिस्डिक्शन फिर उसके बाद इट इज अग्रीड बाय द पार्टीज दैट द यूनाइटेड प्रोविंस शैल एज द एक्ट एज द एप्लीकेंट द पर्सन हुज फाइल्ड द एप्लीकेशन इन द सुप्रीम इन द आई सी जे इंटरनेशनल कोर्ट ऑफ जस्टिस एंड कीमा इज द रिस्पॉन्डेंट द पर्सन हु जिसके अगेंस्ट द एप्लीकेशन हैज बीन फाइल्ड बाय द यूनाइटेड प्रोविंस बट सच अग्रीमेंट इज विदाउट प्रेजिडिस टू एनी क्वेश्चन ऑफ बर्डन ऑफ प्रूफ दिस इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस विल प्ले अ क्रूशल रोल इन योर इंटायर ड्राफ्टिंग बिकॉज आइडली होता क्या है कि हमारे यहाँ और हर जगह देर इज दिस प्रिजम्पन ऑफ इनोसेंस तो सो द रिस्पॉन्डेंट इज प्रिज्यूम्ड टू बी इनोसेंट अंटिल ही ही शी और दे आर फाउंड गिल्टी वॉट डज दैट मीन फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई एम अक्यूज ऑफ सम क्राइम बाय माई फ्रेंड सो माई फ्रेंड विल be imposed with the responsibility to prove that i am guilty of that offense use documents produce karne padenge use evidence deni padegi use arguments lane padenge that why i am uh, uh, guilty of that offense and i will as a defendant will try to put down all those allegations or whatever evidences he uh, discard and disassociate disassociate all the evidences or arguments he comes up with so that is called the presumption of innocence and the burden of proof in a very easy language uh, okay so moving on the rules and principles of the uh, international law will be applicable so ye bhi very very important kyunki bachche confuse ho jate hain kyunki everything is a high it's in hypothetical situation to kaun se laws applicable honge kaun se statutes lagenge ab state of kima to kuch कीमा तो कोई कंट्री नहीं है यूनाइटेड प्रोविंस विच यूनाइटेड प्रोविंस देर यू नो सो दिस इज वेरी वेरी क्रूशल इंटरनेशनल लॉ के प्रिंसिपल्स लगेंगे ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ विच द कोर्ट इज रिक्वेस्टेड टू डिसाइड द केस आर टू बी रेफर्ड इन आर्टिकल थर्टी एट नॉट रियली रेलिवेंट आर्टिकल थर्टी एट यू कैन ऑलवेज रेफर टू personally but not really relevant the uh, the court is also requested to determine the legal consequences including the rights and obligations of the parties arising from its judgment on the question uh, presented so the court will case so the court will not just resolve the dispute they will also impose upon both the parties rights and liabilities as to what is to be done in furtherance of resolving the dispute uh ye nahi ki you know you did this so you'll be punished and it's done what is to be done as a retributive method to overcome the possibility of that problem problem happening again so this is this will play a very crucial part in your prayer i'll just quickly take you to the prayer so you get a clearer reference of what i am trying to say so this is called your prayer this is very very important kyunki yahi pe aap court se keh rahe hote ho ki hame ye chahiye aap se this is what we are here in front 
of you to demand to ask for and this we you have to be really really careful while you are drafting this we'll get into the details of this later abhi ke liye let's get back to this uh, article 4 Uh, all the questions of rules and procedures shall be regulated in accordance with the provisions of the official rules of the first uh, victorian international rules tournament so this they have done to exercise their priority in discretion basically whenever there is something which is uh, you know there is always a possibility of some uh, conflict happening between the parties which is not really defined anywhere in the moot court competition It, you know it's very subjective to interpretation to wahan par international moot court competition jo ho raha hai victorian inka hi discretion chalega okay so again hypothetical but very very crucial the parties uh, uh, request the court to order that the written proceedings should consist of memorials presented by each uh, by each party not later than the date set forth for the official schedule of the first moot court competition you know they are really trying to give a real feel of a moot court competition uh, so deadline meetings uh, very important again deadlines ke andar hi you will have to present the documents or uh, written submissions ke through hoga you know these are all the ground rules very very important article 5 the parties shall accept any judgment of the court as final and binding upon them and shall exercise and shall execute it in its entirety and good faith judgment jo bhi ho court ka uh, against mein ho kisi party ke kisi party ke favor mein ho obviously it's adversarial in nature so they'll have to comply with whatever the court's uh, judgment is immediately after the transmission of any judgment the party shall enter into negotiations on the modalities of the of its negotiation again uh, not really part of the actual moot court competition but to set the ground rules and give, give you a real understanding of how negotiation and judgments and courts disputes proceed after when the oral arguments and the prayer and everything is done the judge has dis- judge has uh, reveal their judgment uh they do both the parties sit together and they uh you know discuss the nuances as to framing the procedure and framework ki jo bhi court ka judgment raha hai how will we execute it in uh resolving the dispute because you know there always be some some complications with that so ne- uh, wahan par bhi uh good communication and negotiation is very important in in witness thereof uh, of the undersigned uh, being duly authorized i have uh, signed the present uh, special agreement and have affixed there to their respective seals of the documents uh, nothing very important wahi wahi jo piche log the na kon ka hi you know so dono type side ke ambassadors ne they have signed the dispute to sign the agreement that means ki ab ye legally binding hai iski koi ye nahi keh sakta ki it was you know done under an influence or uh, does not have any authority not, not it is not legally enforceable the ambassadors have signed it so you know not questioning that so moot court proposition very very important you will have to go through the entire thing very carefully i'll give you a quick overview as to what my moot court problem was about uh so come starting with the background so ye it's not very uniform across all the moot courts uh har moot court ka different pattern hota hai kai baar wo seedhe facts de dete they have tried to make it a little structure to yahan par unhone kya kara hai uh they have started with explaining how there are various kinds of kimis historical records which date back to a thousand thousands years and south kima sea uh is known as uh, all rising and the inland reefs show that uh, the sun and rock is in historical documents late of later dynasties of han dynasty basically is pure mein unhone kara kya hai ki kim कीमीज हिस्ट्री में और कीमीज माइथोलॉजी में और अक्रॉस डायनास्टीज फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू कैन सी हर मिंग एंड किंग डायनास्टीज यहाँ पर सब में साउथ कीमा सी वॉज कंसिडर्ड अ पार्ट ऑफ साउथ कीमा इट हैज ऑलवेज बिन अ पार्ट ऑफ कीमा 
there is no other uh, country that has ever exercised their authority or histor historical judgments mein tha to ek superiority dikhane ki koshish kar rahe hain that we have this claim claim over the territory of the sea the south kima sea why they are sharing this information so that why when you are drafting uh, hamare applicant ke sorry respondent ke side ka uh, memorial you can always use this information in backing up all your arguments so this is uh, very important furthermore uh, successive kimis uh, kimis government it's not just in the his historical records even the kimis governments have exercised jurisdiction of the south kima sea how they have exercised jurisdiction of the south kima sea patrolling exercise karate the or development or management activities hoti thi wahan pe so the navy is not just for protecting a particular territory they are also there to tell the world that you know this is us this is they, they it's like a constant show constant portrayal ki ye particular territory hamari hai that is why all these parades and all these uh, borders pe activities keep happening so that people are aware you know everyone's internationally aware that we are constantly protecting our territories the fact that the only kimis lived in yang uh, islands recorded clearly in the book called kima sea pilot and everything so they are referring to books and all you can always get into the details of uh, historical evidences while we are drafting the memorial for the respective party uh later on uh in this statement we will observe that this is another country bermany who has sent military vessels to south kima sea for survey uh, the government of guanda province protested to the german german uh, fighting kimi sovereignty uh, berman got had to stop the survey and withdrew the team in 1958 the kimis government issued a declaration on the territorial water applicable to all kimis territory including wisma etc etc until 1970s it was very widely recognized by the international community that islands in the south kima sea belong to kima so again uh, uh, there was this another foreign country who tried intruding into south kima sea and kima has uh, imposed their authority later on we'll observe that in 1976 13 colonies of the great empire served their political connections and proclaimed independence on the democratic principles such as equality and liberty this is not really very relevant but uh, you can always take that into consideration even since its established uh, its establishment of democracy united province has become a beacon uh, to world <clears throat> now we are actually moving on to the defendant uh, sorry to the applicants uh stronger points that you can uh, always use while you are drafting your memorials so united province has stood as a symbol of liberty and integrity when it come comes to establishing world peace around the globe uh, and has always fought against dictatorial and fascist governments uh it has also made sure to establish democratically elected institutions decolonization uh for for that purpose they have worked uh, in a lot of initiatives around the world so basically they have been a flag bearer of uh, decolonization around the world this is something uh, that you can always use while you're drafting your memorial from the other side from the applicant's perspective uh, the applicants are the one uh, please remember applicants are the one who have filed the case in the international court of justice uh, moving on a uh, united province have been waging wars against the authoritarian regime and toppling communities regime securing peace democracy etc around the world united province hold a torch of protection so basically they are highlighting the stronger points for the applicant uh, as we have already talked enough about how south kima sea holds their authority in the uh, south kima sea and uh, now we are taking the other parties into consideration the policy of united province is to protect its uh, democratic allies whenever there is an imminent threat to its sovereignty so basically it has it has united province has made its image in the international community of being a really big supporter whichever country has whenever needed help in any regards they have always taking that step forward 
uh, this is something that you can always use while you're drafting your memorials uh, in September 2001 so they have quoted an instance where United Province was attacked by extremist ideology which resulted in 3400 deaths and the civilian population as they were targeted for their freedom <clears throat> the unprovoked attack led to United Province invasion of Afghanistan where it stayed for 20 years to ensure peace and stability in the region meanwhile those with extremist ideologies the United Province could have left a year or two later but it first invaded but it didn't due to their commitment to protect individual liberty again they have quoted an example how united province without any selfish reasons or ulterior motives of economic political or any sort of motives they have just uh, selfishly uh, helped people this this war in fact costed them uh, an arm and a leg but they really wanted to you know take democracy forward uh, so these was this was the background of both the applicant and the uh, defendant basically what the memorial is trying to do is give you a perspective give you a background build a foundation on what ideologies and what perspective uh, these two are proceeding towards the dispute what's the either what's other parties intentions uh with regards to the south Kima sea and how would you expect the ones not in interest to react so again uh so this is again a defining statute un clause it's 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 very it's it's one of the most known laws around internationally for uh, sea and territorial jurisdiction when it comes to water what water terri territories it's called united nation convention on law of seas also called, called the law of sea convention it is basically an inter uh, international agreement uh, so these agreements are not really imposing in nature they are mostly an a sort of an agreement a sort of settlement where, where all the countries around the world unanimously come to an agreement uh, to comply to certain standards it has more than 168 parties including all the countries who are party to disputes of South Kima Sea but excluding South Province. Again they have quoted an article you can always refer to this article and uh, I'm sure it will be later on highlighted while we'll be discussing moot court drafting. Uh, it was signed in 2006 <clears throat> etc 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 uh, disputes on maritime the limitation for from compulsory arbitration again uh, uh, it asks the countries while facing a dispute to always prefer arbitration and negotiation before they refer to adversarial means of disputes re dispute resolutions along with kima over 30 more countries issued this declaration so basically kima is a part of this and obviously so is united program uh, so we'll be taking up the disputes, the, the, the exact dispute, which was the core core story behind the entire thing in the next video. Thank you.